more. I'm going to say quite a bit about tone mapping as well. Um, essentially, the issue is recent high dynamic range sensors have a dynamic range of 120 dB or more. I've heard of somebody, I'm not sure who it is, who claims 160 dB and 150 dB, that's 30 million to 1. Uh, that's not uncommon. Um, now, the dynamic range of sensors is measured with a sequence of flat, you know, just flat field calibrated images that essentially have zero dynamic range. But when we measure dynamic range in cameras, uh, we use typically test charts that have a fairly wide tonal range. In fact, we're working with an image with a significant dynamic range. And these images tend to be fogged by flare light, which is stray light in the image that doesn't come from the point um, that's being imaged. And that uh, dynamic range is generally much lower than the sensor dynamic range. Uh, in fact, flare light, which does dominate camera measurements, uh, can make quite a difference in the dynamic range measurement. And because of this, uh, results can be quite inconsistent, and standards are uh, quite important in order to achieve uh, consistent measurements. Well, I'm going to be discussing a number of issues with conventional dynamic range measurements, things that can make them uh, difficult, particularly in the presence of uh, flare light and, um, and also tone mapping. And I'm going to be proposing a new and more robust test chart design uh, that I believe is more predictive of real world performance and standard charts. So essentially, camera dynamic range is measured uh, from backlit test charts. The test charts may have a linear or a circular pattern. Well, the Xyla is a linear chart. Uh, our 36-pack uh, chart is a, somewhat of a circular arrangement. And dynamic range is essentially defined as the ratio of illumination from just below saturation uh, to the illumination where the signal to noise ratio drops to a specified level. Zero dB is comparable to the sensor dynamic range measurement. It's actually a very low, uh, crummy uh, uh, quality measurement. 20 dB we call high quality. It's, it's pretty good. It's not very high. Um, but it's, you know, images are quite readable at, the, at that level. Um, now, one thing we have noticed and uh, was partially a motivator for the talk is many engineers are under pressure to make measurements that approximate the specs from image sensors, 120 dBs or more. And this is a very difficult thing. Uh, there are all sorts of problems. We've gotten a lot of complaints and we've had to deal with uh, uh, difficult customers as a result of this, or, or rather unhappy customers. And we are you know, trying to tell people camera dynamic range because of the lens, because of the flare light of the lens is much lower than sensor dynamic range. Here is a typical picture of a, of a dynamic range measurement where the upper chart is the tonal response. It's also called the OECF, optoelectric, um, what is it, conversion function, I think. Uh, the lower plot is the scene reference signal to noise ratio, where we have a number of horizontal bars representing different uh, dynamic range for different quality levels. Uh, just recently, we've added this gray part to our uh, results. If you have dynamic range lower than 0 dB, uh, the image is so bad it's kind of useless, and so uh, we now uh, have this gray background. Um, now, Flare measurements are a little bit different, but as you'll see, they're very similar to dynamic range measurements. Essentially, flare light then is response from light that's, that's fogging the image, and basically it's from light that is not at the point that's being imaged. It could be outside the image anywhere but what you're actually imaging. And essentially, in the ISO 18844 standard, which has uh, become fairly widely used. Uh, you have a large white field that extends beyond the frame of the image. And you have a number of light traps. In our case, we have a 
transmissive chart with a Hector Black coating um, that is very, very dark. And the veiling glare for each of these points is the mean value of the dark circle illumination to the mean of the white illumination near the dark circle. And it's kind of a worse case. It's also a, a difficult number to uh, uh, correlate with uh, dynamic range measurements. Um, but the interesting thing is veiling glare and dynamic range measurements have a very uh, uh, interesting similarity. They're both ratios between light and dark areas. Uh, it's just that they represent two extremes of measurement. Typically, uh, dynamic range is measured with small light areas and large dark areas. And, and the opposite holds true when you're measuring uh, flare light. But they are the same ratio. Um, and flare light, with, especially with high dynamic range imagers, does tend to dominate camera dynamic range measurements. Um, the ISO 18844 uh, gives you a ratio that would be very low, corresponding to a very poor dynamic range measurement. But it's very difficult to cor uh, correlate this with uh, real and practical dynamic range measurements. We'll show you a way of a, a proposed way of doing that a little bit later. Uh, now, there is an interesting artifact um, that can happen with failing glare that really is not accounted for at all with the ISO 18844 measurement. And it's known as glare spread. It could be characterized by a glare spread function, but that function is not very unique. It's very roughly an exponential, but that's just a, a very rough approximation. Especially, essentially, glare and glare spread is fogging from very light areas that decays as you go away from the light area. And that decay function, as I say, is not too well defined. I don't think it's been studied extensively. It's likely to vary over the surface of a lens. Um, now, what we have here is we have a cross section taken through the middle of this Xyla chart image where you can very clearly see the gray spread, uh, glare spread uh, right next to the lightest patch. Uh, it's a little bit harder to tell what's going on with the glare in the darker areas. But down below, we've taken a cross section. And this cross section is just below the image. And what you see is just below these light areas, the pixel level gets much higher. And then it decays, and it continues to decay a long distance from the light areas. Uh, well, what this uh, does is it gives you the possibility that if you have a lens that has a very high amount of veiling glare or flare light, uh, there could be a rather long decay that decay could be mistaken for signal, uh, for um, linear types of dynamic range charts. And you could run into uh, a lens that has very bad veiling glare and uh, actually is giving you better measurements than you should because of this glare spread decay. Uh, this is something that is a potential issue. It's a little easier to see in linear charts, but it can also be an issue in uh, circular charts. One thing I should mention about veiling glare, it's a very blunt measurement. Uh, you know, it's, it's one part of flare light, whereas if you have, you know, point sources and scan it, there are lots of ghost images. Veiling glare is kind of the average uh, fogging uh, caused by uh, flare light. Okay, uh, so this is a potential big problem with any of our charts. Now there's another issue that comes up in measurements. And essentially, whenever high dynamic range scenes are processed for human vision, and this means that they're going to be displayed on, uh, on monitors that essentially have a limited dynamic range, uh, presumably in normal room type environments, um, the images are usually have to be tone mapped to make features from the darker areas visible. Uh, what tone mapping does is it adjusts tones over rather large areas so that the darker tones are brought up. But it's designed so it doesn't um, adjust very small areas. Uh, so it maintains 
um, uh, local contrast for small light and dark regions while generally reducing global contrast. And that has a big effect on dynamic range measurements. And this is an original chart image on the left. The image on the right um, was done with a uh, MATLAB tone map function. MATLAB actually has three functions for tone mapping that we've uh, played with. Um, now, to look at its effect, first of all, we look at a um, uh, result for a standard image. What you see is the gamma is 0 0.42. That's roughly the inverse of, of what you need for you know, very accurate sRGB or Adobe RGB reproduction. And here, uh, we're looking at the scene referenced uh, noise where we've essentially di divided out the slope. And what we find is a low quality dynamic range of 70.1 dB. Now, when we look at the tone mapped image, uh, the gamma is much, much lower. The scale has changed, it's auto scale. And we also get a considerably lower um, dynamic range from the tone mapped image. But the, the tone mapped image may uh, very well have fine detail that doesn't show up in this measurement, and we really can't see it uh, with the um, normal chart when you apply tone mapping. Uh, so what we have done is uh, uh, we, we've decided that we need a slightly different definition of dynamic range and then a chart to go with it. And so we define dynamic range as the range of illumination where low contrast detail is visible. Low contrast detail is the classic, you know, pedestrian in the shadow when you're in some kind of tunnel or under a, a bridge in a very high dynam dynamic range scene. You know, unless you can see uh, that kind of low contrast detail, I don't think you can honestly say that um, you're within the dynamic range of the camera. Now, to do this measurement, you need a chart that has such low contrast detail within larger regions. So we've designed a chart that we call the contrast resolution chart to meet these requirements. Now because of constraints in making the chart, it has a 95 dB total dynamic range. This is well under uh, the, the numbers for um, uh, sensors, but this is more than we have ever seen. We'd love to see something more dynamic range. We probably could design another chart, but uh, it, actually it's uh, fairly challenging to uh, manufacture a 95 dB chart. Uh, so the small inner patches have the same mean density as the surrounding uh, gray patch, so they have little effect on tone mapping. Here's a little bit of the detail from the new chart. So the light and dark taken together have the same mean as the gray surrounding. Uh, so we have some new definitions uh, for this chart. Let S be the signal level for each patch, and that's for any of the patches. And then N is the noise for the large gray patch. This is where we measure noise because we can get, it's large enough to get reasonably good noise statistics. The little patches are rather small. So we define a contrast resolution signal as the signal level of the light patch minus the signal level of the dark patch. That is used to calculate contrast resolution signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, uh, which is the contrast resolution signal divided by the noise. Now, uh, for this chart, the de delta density of the chart, the light minus dark is 0.3 optical density, or 6 dB, which is a simple contrast of 2 to 1. I'm still learning about Mickelson and, and Weber contrast. It's uh, rather confusing. Um, now, uh, as you'll see, we display these uh, new measurements in magenta on results plots. Um, but before we get to the results plots, I'll show you one thing that I think is one of the big, uh, nice things about our new plot. You can take each large region and you can darken or lighten it so that all of the regions are displayed at the same level. So here's the original image. And what we've done here is using XYY space, uh, we've 
change the big Y so that the mean of all of these is visible. And what you can see here is the actual uh, contrast of the light and dark patches within the greater patches. And you can see where the visibility of features disappears. And what we see here is on the bottom row, and this is not very visible, uh, it measures the standard SNR and the contrast resolution SNR, which we found is the best uh, number to correlate with visibility. And here, the contrast resolution SNR is 2.42 here, 1.29 here, drops below one here. So it's in this region where the image disappears. And as you can see, uh, the lower regions, there's, there's nothing to be seen. This is a very high quality um, uh, single digital SLR camera with a very uh, good kind of a lens on it. Um, but this ability to see the detail uh, is not something you can do with a standard chart. Uh, and this works well in the presence of uh, local tone mapping. Here is a standard result. Here what you see is the, um, the uh, contrast resolution SN signal is rather somewhat lower than the regular signal. And also the SNR contrast resolution is, is a bit lower as well. Uh, but here what's interesting is uh, you get the result uh, with uh, a tone mapping applied. Go back to the original. The signal itself is a bit strange. It actually seems to increase. But the signal to noise ratio doesn't uh, decrease very much. And this is showing you what the SNR for the real visible fine detail is. So I think this is a much better number than the uh, SNR based on uh, standard charts. Now, this SNR number, five minutes, um, okay, this can be used uh, to define a dynamic range, which is basically uh, the, the tonal range between saturation and where some specified SNR, uh, contrast resolution SNR, somewhere typically between 0 and 10 dB is reached. And this is a pretty solid measurement that uh, gives you an indication of uh, performance of a system. Now, we can do something interesting involving veiling glare here. Uh, so I'll have to be pretty brief with. But you can photograph this chart with a very light surround. Basically put it in a light box. Don't cover a big light box. Don't cover the odor part. So you have lots of veiling glare. And with this type of measurement, you can look at the reduction in dynamic range caused by veiling glare. And I think it gives you a much more meaningful measurement than the uh, ISO 18844 measurement. So conclusions here. Um, standard dynamic range test charts, simple grayscale step charts, uh, don't work very well for tone me measurements. Uh, don't give you a direct indication of the visibility of low contrast objects over a wide range of illumination and uh, are subject to error from flare related artifacts which may occasionally improve the measured dynamic range. So we uh, are introducing a new test chart um, and uh, we're going to be working on getting it uh, uh, presented to standards organizations. Uh, which not only do we think is a better dynamic range measurement, but it can also be used to measure the effect of veiling glare on dynamic range. Uh, so we'll be working with the, uh, we're working with the P2020 uh, committee that you heard about earlier. We'll probably be working out equations for different dynamic range for different subject contrasts. And I will be uh, correlating it with the uh, contrast detection probability that Mark Gisa uh, presented earlier today. Thank you. Okay.